So these are my new archival inks, my first signature products with Ranger. Um, and I love flowers, so all my names have like a garden theme to them and flower, flower names. Um, archivals are awesome. When I first discovered Ranger, and I, my very first time I used the Distress inks, I fell in love with them. But I wanted more archival colors because archivals are permanent when they're dry. So you can add any water-based product over them when they're dry and nothing will happen to them. That's the benefit of the archival ink. Um, Distress inks are water-based dye ink. These are oil-based dye ink. So oil and water don't mix and that's why they're the perfect combination. Um, the color palette alone is beautiful by itself but it also coordinates perfectly with distress because that's what I use every day. So here's some close-up samples because I think these show it better than the labels, the cute colors. And I just stenciled this right through a stencil with um, cut and dry foam. So since stencils are so popular, I wanted to show people that you can stencil with archivals. So I have this layered tree stencil, a very easy way to um, add two colors easily without a whole lot of masking. Um, and you can apply the, the archival inks with the blending tool, or you can use cut and dry foam. I've been using the cut and dry foam because it's just a little bit smaller and it's a little bit easier. Um, sometimes this is like a little bit too big and you can't really see where, where you're applying the ink. So just little pieces of cut and dry foam. So I use potting soil for my tree trunk. And you can tap it on and you'll get a light amount of ink. If you rub it on, you get a whole lot darker and it's a whole lot quicker. And I have zero patience, so normally I am rubbing because I want to get on to the next thing. Okay, so that's my tree trunk. This is really a good stencil because it's good for any holiday. You can, you know, any season. You can leave it naked for winter. You can turn it sideways and hang a bird branch, birdhouse from it. So the next thing I want to do is just move this stencil over. And as long as the brown is covered up, the stencil's in the right spot. So I just put this back. And now I can add my leaves with a different color. And I use orange blossom for this time. And you can get several different colors too. If you pounce lightly, you're gonna get a little bit of ink. If you rub hard, you're gonna get a whole lot more ink. So you can kind of get some shading done in here. That was orange blossom. If I go to red geranium now, I can just kind of go over some of the colors and I'll get a little bit of blending there and I can make it a little bit darker now and rub it. And this is be my tree. So I have this multicolored tree that's been done with archival ink. So once that dry, that is going to be permanent. So now I have this stencil here that's all full of ink. It's like, okay, what am I going to do with this? The best way to clean archival ink is with plain old cheap rubbing alcohol from the dollar store. So if you own a, if you own a store, the giant size bottle is like a dollar. Just paper towel, and this, it wipes right off. If you ever stamp like on metal or glass or plastic and your archival ink slips, your stamp slips and you have a, have a mess, rubbing alcohol takes it off really easily. So, I just want to make sure this is dry. Is it electric? That's quiet. Yeah, Ranger's nice. Heat Tool is the best. Mm -hmm. The best. Okay, so now I know that that's going to be permanent. I can add my Distress inks and do my background. So if you think about this, stenciling with Archival, you do things just the opposite. You, instead of starting with your background, have everything done, and then move to the top layer, you can get your main image in, and then you can add your color exactly where you want it. I'll just add some distress here and you go right over the tree and it's going to be just fine. That was scattered straw. I add some broken china. I'm trying to hurry because I didn't get everything done last time. I had so much more I wanted to do. Like, ooh, don't go. Okay, and then just some faded. And I want some brush cord on. I want to make this kind of dark so that you can see the next step easier. So my tree still looks good. If I want to add a background out of this and not affect my tree, water is the key. So if I put some water on my craft sheet, I use Distress for my background, right? So that's going to react with water. The archival is permanent when it's dry, so that's not going to react with water. 
Um, you want to only stamp one time into the water. If you keep stamping, you pick up way too much water and you just kind of end up with a big blobby mess and the pattern is gone. So that's what you get by just stamping with water. So I think it's really cool. Now you can see now that water sat on there pretty long. My tree looks perfect and my background is beautiful. So that's why I like the distress and the archival together. Um, and I, always, I like these colors for background colors. I always use jet black for the main image because then it'll really pop. Look, I never use black for the background, almost never. And before I had watering can, I would try to lightly do black, but it was just, it was always black because it's black ink. So the watering can is absolutely awesome for background stamping too. And I have that. It's Lovely. 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 Can I bring it over here to take a picture of it? Sure. Then the next thing I wanted to show you too is um, background stamping with archival. <clears throat> if you send that back over here. If you just lightly rub your ink pad on here, you're gonna pick up very little ink. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. I want to add some more stamping. Oh, hold on, sorry. Okay, sorry. that's all right. Let it finish it. Okay, so I just lightly swiped my, um, what did I use? Cornflower blue. Um, I like wood mounted stamp, but this is a benefit of unmounted is that you can press just little bits and pieces wherever you need to fill in your background. And if you just lightly rub the ink pad on, you get very little ink on here, but it's another layer to the background. And I think the more layers you add, the better the art looks very very subtle so even though I added more archival as long as that's dry I can still go ahead and add more water-based product over it so if I wanted to add um, I love this thing I love this so if I put some distress stain on my craft sheet use Tim's detail water brush this thing is amazing it makes the cutest little dots pick up some ink and just tap this on and you get these cute little ink dots if you keep tapping after you've used up all the ink, then it starts to spit out water, and the distress is always going to react with the water, so you're going to have water spots on too, and that adds like another layer to the background then. And you can see my tree, even with all that fluid on it, is still perfect. So that is stenciling with archival. I'll take a picture now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not done, but you can have oh, it now. That, no, you take. That's fine. Okay, next thing. Um, so you have done it quick. Huh? Oh, you can have it. It's fine. Um, I wanted to show you too that you can make dimensional embellishments with stencils too. Okay, so this is a sheet of my Clearly for Art. It's my moldable plastic material. So I took a whole sheet, painted it with Granger's glue and seal, the matte finish. Okay, and then put vintage dictionary paper on the top. So now I have Clearly for Art on the back, paper on the top. You see no bubbles in it at all. This is why I love glue and seal. This fragile as this paper is. The, the glue and seal does not work the paper, there's not one wrinkle in it. So what I did was, <clears throat> just to make this a little bit quicker, I just stenciled through. Let's see what I do. I use corn flour for this one. Just stencil through here. And like I said, you can pounce it if you want a lighter color. If you want a darker color, go ahead and rub it. Okay, because I used archival again, as long as it's dry, I can add any water-based product over it. So if I want the flower center, I can go ahead and color that with the markers, and I know it's not going to affect the, the petals at all. Oops, I got here a mess. I can just take, if I want this to have yellow center. Okay, so then I'm not going to cut it out, but if I cut that out, this is what I would have this flower. So if I heat the material, it will soften it, um, and it, while it's warm, then you can shape it any way you want to shape it. And it looks like a paper flower because it's got paper on the front, but because it has clearly for art on the back, it is... Say that word again, I'm sorry. Clearly, clearly, clearly for art. For art. So now I have genius. a flower. Huh? A word, genius. <laughs> yep, it will not bend or break, and it looks like a paper flower. And it's, just, and it's been stenciled with archival, so still, if I want to miss this with perfect pearls, I can still go ahead and do that and nothing's gonna happen to that flower. Um, another cool thing, Tim's got his cool industrious stickers. These are like 
awesome. Absolutely awesome. So um, archivals will work on all surfaces. If you think like what ink is going to work on this, archival is going to be the answer because it works on almost every surface. So um, to alter this, if I take my cornflower blue, if I rub really hard, it's going to get the color over the, all, all the recesses. If I go over it lightly with orange blossom, <laughs> a beautiful, isn't it? I about fainted when I saw this yesterday. I was like, oh, you are so cute. <laughs> oh my God. get that off of there and you can go ahead and dry this this is just a kind of a metallic cardstock and that'll be permanent on there once it's dry here's another really cool thing about the archivals you saw me clean my did I clean the stencil with the art with the alcohol so if I think this was not really the color I wanted it doesn't match my project you can remove all the color from it go right back to where you started I love it totally love it love it love it and you can see all that archival on here is gone. So archivals are good for like altering metal too. If you've had metal embellishments that you don't really like the color of or if you want them to look a little bit different, um, archivals are good for that. I have metallic embossing paste, so I wanted to show you how my archivals worked over that. This is this plain silver embossing paste, and that's what it looks like. So I did six more samples of the silver and took my archival pad for each one, rubbed it right over the top of it, let it dry. So now I have all these metallic colors with the archival and my mm -hmm. metallic Very paste. Good. Okay. So I did the same thing with the gold then. There's the gold embossing paste, that's how it started. Same six archival colors. And you'll see the big color difference because we're over a different base. So if you look at those two, this is red geranium, that's also red geranium, totally different colors. Mm. The biggest difference, I think, is with the cornflower blue. This is the cornflower over silver, and this is the cornflower yeah. over the gold. So if you think about it, gold is yellow and that's yeah. blue, yeah. so it kind of makes it green. So with you know six, six colors here, two metallic paste, you have all these options. And if I wanted to stamp over the top of this, I would use archival again. Cool? Mm, what else can I tell you? Oh, I have so much more. <laughs> Just keep talking. <laughs> I got in trouble last time because I was too late. Mm -hmm. You can um, also emboss with archival, and a lot of people don't know that if you use ultra fine detail embossing powder. So, this is really cool too. Um, and I like jet black on my art parts. So, I have some art parts that are sized exactly <laughs> for here. So, some of them are basic shapes like flowers and these kind of things, you use any background on. But if you want a lot of detail, there'll be a matching stamp. So you want to make sure you know which side fits, that side doesn't fit, that side does. Okay, so hopefully I will have some time to show you this. Okay, so if I put this on an acrylic block and try to stamp this, you really can't line it up. You can get it fairly close, but not good enough. So if you just leave your stamp on your craft sheet, Jet Black Archival, press the art part onto it, And now it's got all the detail oh, on there. Wow. So I can go ahead and emboss it. You don't have as much open time as you do with Distress, but you can still emboss with Archival. And I love, 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 love the super fine detail powder. And the reason I like it too is that because it's such a fine powder, the line is really, really fine. So if you color with markers, there's no shadow at all. It's, you can color right up to the end of the image. So now all I have to do is bless this with the heat tool. And you can emboss with archival. Which I like. Does anybody have any questions or anything else I can tell you? Like Tim's new little um, cork dome thing, or what are they called? Dome, whatever they are. Yeah. You, if you want to change the color of those archival ink, you can just put some on a paper towel and put it over the, the glass or plastic, and that's going to age it too. That's really a cool thing. Um, like I said, anytime you want to age metal, like a metal embellishment, any of the browns with orange, really cute together. So I have my embossed image. And I can go over that now with, with the markers easily. Yeah. And because it's embossed, I mean, it takes no time to color it. Is the cop here again? I'm here. <laughs> She's, like, no. She's like, bye. How long do we have? Go away. 
<laughs> the one thing, huh? You have five minutes. <laughs> Go away. Oh, the one, five minutes, though. The one thing you'll notice, too, is when, any, when you put anything water-based over art parts, it looks really, really dark because it's a paper product, so that fluid is soaking in. You can see how light it's getting already. But it totally changes, especially if you use the stains, which have a lot, have so much fluid in. It's like, whoa, that color's so dark, I didn't want it. The minute it dries, it's absolutely beautiful. So I can just color right over my little flowers here. And that's how easy it is to, to emboss with archival. So I think it's really a very versatile ink. It works on a lot of surfaces. If you're using glass, metal, plastic, art parts, um, grunge board, grunge paper, obviously Tim's new metallic stuff here, little industrious stickers. Awesome. So you can see how much that lightened up already. And obviously you can add more shading too if you take the time to do that, but I just wanted to show you quickly that you can. And I love it with the super fine detail embossing powder.